Hello, government students. Hey, today I want to go over the assignment that I gave you in our la last class, uh, looking at some of our governors of the, over the last 50 or 60 years. And we're going to start off with Adlai Stevenson II. Uh, he was quite a statesman in our history. He's the kind of guy that we should be proud served our state. Adlai Stevenson ran twice for president uh, in the 1950s. He probably would have won, except he had the misfortune of running against the man who was probably at that time the most popular man, not just in America, but perhaps in the entire world. He had to run against Dwight Eisenhower. Of course, this is just a few years after Eisenhower had uh, been our primary uh, general during World War II, and many people, of course, credited Eisenhower with our victory over Nazi Germany during that war. So Stevenson did lose, of course, twice then to Eisenhower for the presidency. Uh, but afterwards, uh, in the early 1960s, he was named by President Kennedy to be our United Nations ambassador. And he was the United Nations ambassador during the Cuban Missile Crisis, which was a very serious event uh, in the early 1960s, which perhaps was as close to the United States and the Soviet Union ever came to a shooting war. Uh, some people were afraid that we were on the brink of World War III at that time, and Stevenson uh, was very famous for his confrontation with the Soviet UN ambassador at that time. Um, he's a part of a, of a very powerful uh, family in Illinois. Uh, his son was also a politician here in Illinois. And his grandfather was as well. So Adlai Stevenson, he's the kind of guy that we should be proud of. He was followed by William G. Stratton. William, of course, is the formal name for uh, people who are oftentimes called Bill. And Stratton was our youngest governor, and he was often referred to as Billy the Kid. That was his nickname. Next up came Otto Kerner. Otto Kerner was a general during World War II, and afterwards he became a uh, governor of Illinois. He resigned the governorship to become a federal judge, uh, and then unfortunately he had to resign his judgeship because he was charged with some serious crimes, uh, financial crimes, and was convicted. So he was a general, he was a governor, he was a judge, and he finished off as a felon, unfortunately, for Governor and General Kerner. He was succeeded by Sam Shapiro, uh, who basically just finished out Kerner's uh, term after Kerner resigned the governorship uh, to become a judge. So Shapiro had a very short term in office. He was succeeded by uh, Richard Ogilvie, and Ogilvie was a good governor, and he is best known for his uh, active involvement in securing the approval of our Constitution of 1970. So he was very instrumental in that effort, and of course we are still living under the Constitution of 1970. All of these guys had been, uh, after um, uh, Adlai Stevenson, all of these guys had been Republicans. Stevenson was a Democrat. And then after a long period of Republicans, Dan Walker came along. He was, he was a Democrat. And he was very famous during the uh, uh, run-up to uh, the campaign. He walked the length of the entire state from the border of Wisconsin all the way down to Cairo, Illinois, at the very southern tip of our state. He walked it. It took him about a year uh, off and on walking the entire length of the state during his campaign. Kind of funny, his name is Walker. And, you know, kind of goes with that. He walked the entire state. Uh, unfortunately, after he uh, completed his term of governor, he uh, worked at a bank. He was a, an executive at a large bank. And there he did some shady dealings. And he, too, was convicted of uh, fraudulent activity and had to serve some jail time. Next up came Big Jim Thompson. Uh, governor Thompson was our state's longest serving governor and uh, quite a few years from 1977 all the way to 1991. Uh, back in the election of I believe it was the 1982 governor's election, he ran against the son of Adlai Stevenson, the governor from the 1950s. Uh, Adlai Stevenson had been a senator, a U.S. senator representing Illinois and Washington, D.C., and then he decided to run for governor against Thompson. Uh, 
it was one of the closest governor elections in our state's history. And there were a couple of recounts, I believe, and eventually Thompson came out on top, I think just by, you know, maybe a thousand or two thousand votes. It was a very close election with heavy turnout. And then Thompson went on to win a couple of more terms after that, our longest serving governor. And he's well respected uh, nationally. And uh, he was a Republican. And again, his nickname was Big Jim. When Thompson decided not to run again. He was succeeded by the man who had been his lieutenant governor, Jim Edgar. Jim Edgar was also very popular and well respected and Edgar actually decided uh, not to run for another term. He probably could have won had he chosen to. He had some heart trouble while he was governor and that might have influenced his decision not to run for governor again. He was uh, replaced then by George Ryan, another Republican. Uh, Ryan uh, was very well known for ending the death penalty in Illinois. It's still on our books, but he put a moratorium on it, meaning that he would not enforce the death penalty. And he has that power to do that. Um, the reason he did that was because uh, the University of Chicago did a study uh, in which they were able to prove with DNA evidence that several people sitting on death row in Illinois were in fact innocent of the crime for which they were sentenced to death. So when Ryan heard about that, much to his credit, he decided that we needed to stop the death penalty, that it would be horrible to put someone to death for a crime they did not commit. Unfortunately for Ryan, he uh, also engaged in some bad stuff. Uh, he actually started uh, selling licenses, commercial driver's license for truckers. Uh, if a truck driver was willing to pay into Ryan's campaign, he would issue a commercial driver's license for them, whether or not they were really qualified to, to drive a big truck. This came to light when there was a, a fatal accident in which someone was killed. And when uh, the police did some investigation after the accident, it, it became obvious that the person who drove the truck had no business driving the truck. And it became known then that he had paid money for his commercial driver's license. And it, it was just the tip of the iceberg of a lot of things that Ryan was engaged in, which were uh, both immoral, probably, and also illegal. And he ended up having to resign the governorship. Uh, well, he didn't resign. He served out his term, but shortly after he finished his term, uh, he was uh, put on trial and convicted and had to spend a pretty significant jail time. He was replaced by Rod Blagojevich. While all these scandals were swirling around Ryan, Blagojevich ran on a ticket to bring back ethics and responsibility to our government. Uh, Blagojevich was a Democrat. Ryan had been a Republican. And Blagojevich ran on this reform ticket. However, Bogoyevich was equally corrupt. Uh, it, I guess corruption in Illinois is a bipartisan thing uh, because uh, he too did some shady things, including selling a Senate seat. Uh, when Barack Obama became president, he had to, of course, resign his Senate seat. And Blagojevich, as we've discussed earlier in class, decided to sell that seat, basically, uh, to someone who was not really qualified to be a senator. And he was caught in that. And that, as well as a few other things, caused him to be sent to jail. He was just recently released after serving about 10 years in prison. Blagojevich was replaced by another Democrat, Pat Quinn. Pat Quinn was there for a while. Um, not a whole lot happened really during Quinn's term of office, it seems like. Uh, but he served a couple of terms, and then he was eventually defeated by Bruce Rauner, a Republican. Rauner was a very, very wealthy man, one of the wealthiest men in Illinois. His term was not particularly, um, uh, I would say it wasn't particularly uh, uh, successful. Uh, Rauner was mainly constantly involved in struggles with the Democratic-controlled General Assembly. They could not come to agreement basically on anything, and uh, they we were always in budgetary problems while Rauner was governor because he and the General Assembly could not come to agreement on how to spend our state's money. It was not a particularly pleasant time in our Illinois uh, government. Uh, he uh, tried to run again for a second term, but was defeated by our current governor, Jay Pritzker, also one of the wealthiest men in Illinois and among the 300 richest people in the United States. Um, Prisker and Rauner, when they ran against each other, that was, I believe, at that time, the most expensive gubernatorial 
race in the United States ever uh, because these are two very wealthy men spending a lot of their own personal wealth on their campaign as well as of course party money you know the political party money too so uh, these are our governors going all the way back to the 1950s we've had some very good statesmen and successful governors we've had a few who were successful but in their private lives uh, did some things which uh, were not good and then we've had a few that just basically weren't particularly good governors as well um, so with that we're going to stop this presentation and i will let you uh, check canvas and see what's up next talk to you later